For those of you that have watched my uh, channel before, and you probably know by now um, that I um, most of my videos are um, usually I'll post um, video game live streams or um, short clips. I'll post a lot of gun videos and history related content, you know, the American Civil War and things like that. So, uh, as you have probably noticed by the title of this video, this is going to be a little bit different. Um, I don't usually do anything like this. I haven't ever done anything like this before. Not a video like this. Um, but I wanted to get on here and talk about my experience at the Octagon Hall um, in Franklin, Kentucky. So, um, I went there um, on Saturday with my friend Noah. Uh, we had been planning this for a while. I had been planning on uh, taking him there. I had already been before with my grandfather, but I was planning on taking Noah. So um, I decided, you know, since I have a weekend off, you know, my the place I work, um, uh, I've been working a lot of weekends lately, and I finally got a weekend off, so I messaged up Noah, and I said, hey, you want to go to Octagon Hall uh, this weekend? He said, yeah, sure, I'll be down for that, so, and we kind of made that plan. Um, for those of you that are uh, paranormal investigators or have any interest in the paranormal, you, um, you should know what Octagon Hall is old antebellum uh, plantation house in Franklin, Kentucky um, that is said to be extremely haunted by <laughs> rumored to be hundreds of ghosts um, uh, I'll give I'm not going to go too much into detail about the overall history of the house I'll, I will say that the house was built in 1847 by uh a man named uh, Andrew Jackson Caldwell, I think his name was, um, and during the civil uh, during the Civil War, uh, Caldwell was a staunch uh, secessionist, and uh, the house served as a hiding place for Confederates that were um, trying to escape the Union Army, and uh, it also served as a hospital for both Union and uh, Confederate soldiers during the Civil War and um, well uh, long story long story short the house has seen a lot of suffering a lot of death um, I, I can't remember the year but the Caldwells uh, lost their daughter Mary Elizabeth I think her name was Mary Elizabeth I know her first name was Mary I can't remember the middle name but I think it was Elizabeth anyway um, the Caldwells lost their um, daughter at a young age, Mary Elizabeth. They were down, or she was down in the uh, winter kitchen. You know that you had a winter kitchen and a summer kitchen. The summer kitchen was outside, and the winter kitchen was in the basement. Um, I'm pretty sure that's where it happened. Um, but anyway, uh, Mary was down in the basement. I don't, I don't know whether she was playing or what, and she. Uh, uh, her dress caught on fire in the on the stove or the fireplace. Um, the fireplace. It was a fireplace, I think. And uh, she burned, but she didn't die immediately. Um, so she was severely burned, and and uh, she spent seven days of excruciating, agonizing pain before she. Um, finally died in the upstairs bedroom, one of the upstairs bedroom, her little bedroom, uh, and um, they also had a, uh, had a son, uh, a son whose name I can't remember, who, uh, not at a very old age, fell, he fell uh, down the stairs, I think it may be 18 months old, I can't remember how old he was. Um, he fell down the stairs and broke his neck and died so um, that's just a little bit of it 
history behind the Octagon Hall. And uh, it's been said to be an enormous paranormal hotspot. A lot of paranormal investigators have been there, including some very well-known ones like Aaron Goodwin from Ghost Adventures. And I think some of the TAPS members have been there and some uh, YouTubers have been there. Uh, Omar Gosh has been there. Uh, you know, people like that. Um, so, so it's very well known for that. And, um, and, um, in, in, fa in fact, uh, more people probably go there for the paranormal investigating than the actual just looking at old trinkets, which it also has a lot of. Um, of course, the, fir the first time I went with my grandfather, I, um, I went there to, um, mainly to just, uh, I wanted to go to a museum, and we went, and I just wanted to look at the history of the place, and kind of learn about it. And when I was there with my grandfather, um, my grandfather is not a believer in the paranormal, he doesn't believe in that kind of thing. I, I kind of did, but I, I never really experienced anything up to that time, out of the ordinary. Um, I was in, I was in the parlor, and I um, got a hard tap on the neck. I didn't get pushed. I just got a hard tap on the neck, like I felt it. And, my, and I looked, and I looked behind me. There was no one there. And my grandfather was in the other room, um, nowhere near me. So um, that was the only thing that happened on my last visit. But this visit, um, of course, um, Noah and I came. We uh, just to give us something to do. Um, we had nothing to do. We were bored out of our gourds. And, uh, so I just said, hey, let's go to Octagon Hall. And he said, okay. But, uh, yeah. Uh, this, this visit was kind of the same as last in terms of what we were going for. Well, yeah. Uh, I kind of wanted to show him a little history and also wanted to see if we can ca catch anything paranormal, kind of like an informal investigation. Um, so, um, so um, I went and picked him up in, in, in his house, um, and uh, we drove up to Franklin, Kentucky. We both live in Tennessee. He lives in Andersonville, I live in Portland, which is, um, Portland's a border town of Kentucky. Uh, we, I live about 35 minutes from Franklin. But anyway, um, I picked him up in Hendersonville, and we drove all the way back into Kentucky to, um, Octagon Hall, and I remember arriving, uh, at Octagon Hall, and both of us kind of felt kind of this heaviness as soon as we, uh, arrived in the driveway and kind of had nerves um, no Noah said a prayer um, because we really didn't know what we were gonna find at first we didn't think we were gonna find anything and it was just gonna be a regular um, investigation or a regular visit with no uh, No um, evidence, really, that we'd find. Of course, of course, we didn't really film, and I really, really, really regret it because from the moment we arrived, things kind of happened. Like, we, like it was, um, it wasn't like uh, we didn't really see anything out of the ordinary. We didn't like see any shadow figures or. We didn't really see the ghosts or anything like that. It wasn't like that, but we heard. It, it was more like what we heard. Um, I, I did. I did catch something on the SLS camera, which I'll talk about later. But um, I, I don't know where to start exactly. I'll just start at the beginning and kind of remember the best I can.
in the order that it happened. Um, Noah and I uh, walked through the door, uh, like the back door. There's this back door where you, where you go in. Um, the, stair, the stairs to the basement are immediately on the right. And you go up ahead and to the left of the parlor. No. No, no, no. I, th I think straight ahead is the parlor. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe there are two. I, for, some, for some reason, it's kind of a fog. Uh, exactly. And, but I, I just know you you walk straight in and straight in, pretty, pretty much straight ahead. Is, yeah, straight ahead is the parlor. Okay. Um... And, uh, immediately, I, I was wearing this hat, um, this gray hat, and, um, immediately, when Noah and I walked in the room, or in the house, um, there, there were a group of women, one, one of them was like, I don't know, a volunteer worker there at the property, and the other two were uh, a mother and daughter, and they were, they were messing with the spirit box. One of the weird ones where you, where it like there's like the subtitles on the screen or whatever. Immediately as we walked in, uh, her uh, spirit box said "nice hat," and uh, and she came over and showed me. I'm like, whoa! Like we hadn't been here for five seconds, and uh, there are already some strange things happening. And the funny thing about it is there. Were was, well, there there was someone else in the house wearing a hat, but he was in a completely different room. Um, with with he was with the tour guides, and it, it was funny because as soon as I walked in, uh, the uh, spirit box, her spirit box, said "nice hat," and uh, the, from from there, uh, uh, we knew it was gonna be kind of an adventure. So we we stayed there um, for a while, kind of waited for the the uh, the guy that actually works there um, to kind of give us the history of the house, uh, paranormal history, as well as the uh, history history of the house. And he was he was a really nice guy. He was really helpful. I talked to him for a bit. Um, he kind of showed us his spirit box that he used, kind of demonstrated it a little bit. I use, I have the same one on my phone that I use. So um, it was it was already 2:30 by the time we we got done with the um, and went, by the time he got done telling the history of the house. By, by the, and I, I sat around and, I, and talked to him. Noah and I talked to him for quite a bit after he got done with that little demonstration. Um, and he showed he showed us pictures of like things they got on camera and whatnot. So by that time it was already past three, and the house is uh, supposed to close at three p.m. But um. He, he was nice enough to uh, let us stay past three because they, they they already had a uh, paranormal investigators coming later anyway so it was kind of a win-win for us so we other than him being down in the dining room uh, we uh, no one and I pretty much had to have to ourselves so he, fi he finally turned us loose kind of let us explore the house for as long as we wanted to as long as he was going to be there which we got a we got a good hour or two um in the house and we just been uh going through the house um looking at the old artifacts and kind of investigating seeing if we would catch anything seeing if anything out of the ordinary would happen I, I, you know I, I, um, I hadn't actually done a formal investigation before I was trying to be a little careful because I just I 
I just didn't want to start something that I couldn't finish, but, um, so we headed upstairs, and up, upstairs is where all the activity happened, um, we, we headed upstairs, the, fir the first, uh, bedroom to the left, as soon as you walk up the stairs is where Mary Elizabeth's room was, the, the little girl that, um, burned to death. Uh, she died seven days later in the bed upstairs. Um, and then there, there was a, um, there was another room there where, um, where, um, during the Civil War, there, they did, um, it was like a little hospital there where they would treat wounded soldiers and, So there was a uh, big old mat. I think, I guess, master bedroom in there. And this little room to the right, when you walk up the stairs, it's like a, I don't know what it is. Yeah, the, the I think the attic door's in there, and there's this little flight of stairs, which is common in, in antebellum houses at that time. Um, there's a little flight of steps that leads downstairs. Back to the first floor. But anyway, I, I want to get to the uh, paranormal uh, things that happen. So uh, we walk. We walk upstairs, and we're kind. We're kind of just looking around, and immediately we walk up there. We're starting to hear noises. Of course. Um, I, I want to point out that the tour guide is still downstairs. He's downstairs messing with his spirit box in, in the dining room. Uh, so some of the noises we were hearing were him. But there were other noises that were coming from upstairs that we were hearing. Um, I get, at one point we were hearing um, boots, like heavy footsteps upstairs, like, uh, I was in the master bedroom, and there was this little door to the uh, left, it was to the left of me, you know, that led, led kind of to this little tiny hallway, and at the end of the hallway was this little, um, chest that had a French saint symbol on it, and to the, and to the right was where that hospital room was, and it was coming from in there, uh, I was just kind of, um, in the in the room, looking at some of the artifacts, and I heard and I heard heavy like soldier footsteps coming to my right or left. Kind of went to investigate. There was nothing, and uh, and um, so I d I decided um to break out the spirit box and um. Mary Elizabeth's room. Uh, kind, of, kind of the test it out. I have this spirit box called Necrophonic. Uh, that I, I didn't know whether it would work or not. I heard mixed reviews on it. Uh, but some, some of the paranormal investigators I watch on YouTube use it a lot. And they say it's like the only one they trust. So I decided to buy it. Test it out. I tested it out. Mary Elizabeth's room. I, no, uh said that when he was in Mary Elizabeth's room, he felt an odd sensation. I don't know, he felt, he felt different than he did the whole time that I saw him that day. Like, almost like an odd sensation of... almost happiness. Which, which was odd. Because of the tragedy that happened in that room, that's where Mary died. Anyway, I brought out the spirit box, and I, I was messing around with the spirit box, and I said, uh, and I, I was just asking things like, what happened in this room, Who, whose room was this, and, and through the spirit box a couple times I got Mary, in, in a little girl's voice, a couple times said Mary, and um, A 
couple a couple times. Uh, I, I would ask, what happened to you, Mary? Or um, what happened in this room? And um, I would hear Mary again. Then I heard gone come through the spirit box. Like my my biggest regret on this trip was that I didn't catch more, or that I didn't use them. That I didn't actually use my camera, like film. So, but I plan I plan on doing another investigation of Octagon Hall. Um, where I film. Anyway, I was catching things like that in Mary's room, and, um, and I'd hear several times when Noah would speak to the, the spirit box, uh, Mary would, like, like this, the box would say things like, play with me, and things like that, in a little kid's voice. But when I, when I would speak to the box, it would say things like, gone, or get out. Like, oh, almost like something was trying to form an attachment to Noah, but wanted me out of the way. But anyway, um, so to the uh, SLS finding, which I regret not catching on camera. Uh, I was using my SLS camera, but I wasn't filming. And I was in the room across from Mary's room. And through the end, if you don't know what an SLS camera is, it's like a, if, if you, for example, if you point it at me or a person, it'll um, kind of generate this green stick figure type appearance over me or any person. But this SLS camera I'm using, if um, it's kind of weird because you can like point it at a door or a chair or something like that, and it'll pick, it'll pick up the stick figure thing. It's weird. So you got you gotta really try to debunk debunk it if you catch something on the SLS camera. But I, I was pointing the SLS camera at Elizabeth's room at her bed. It's right there, visible when you're out of the room. And I saw a stick figure um, sitting on the bed course there's a doll sitting on the bed so I, I'm almost positive that I'm gonna have to debunk what I saw there but at the same time when I, I went closer that disappeared I didn't see the stick figure again when I got closer and then when I went back and looked at it from the perspective I was before I didn't see it again like it was gone and I didn't understand it because usually you can pick up uh, dolls on, on the SLS camera and it won't be paranormal it'll just be um the SLS camera would think the doll's a person or something like that. It's weird, but it was like the the, stick, the, the uh, when when I was picking it up on the SLS camera, it was like um, kind of moving. Its arms were moving a little bit. Head was kind of tilting a little bit, moving. Um, but. I, I don't really know how to explain what I saw there, but that, that's what I saw. So a after we caught some good evidence, like we caught uh, foot, and there were footsteps like almost right next to us, and we caught all that stuff on the spirit box. We we caught some tapping noises and the SLS camera. We caught all that, so we decided to move on down to the basement. Yay, the spooky basement. We didn't know what to expect from the basement. Like the basement's usually, usually when I'm in a haunted place. I, I have been in haunted places before, and the basement of uh, said place is usually my least favorite place to go because I, uh, um, being in basements like in creepy places is usually uh, kind of something that makes me a little nervous sometimes. So we head on down to the basement after spending quite a lot of time up there and the feeling isn't quite as intense as it was upstairs on the second floor. We get to the basement and everything is cold down there. You can expect that from a basement. It's cold. 
but there's not any negative feelings. Like, when I was upstairs, Noah and I felt opposite feelings. Like, he felt almost happy. Like, he felt fine. But I, I felt like, it feels like death up here, you know? I felt like I can tell tragedy happened up here. But in the basement, I didn't quite feel that as much. Like, I, I felt kind of nervous, heavy. But I didn't feel uncomfortable like I did upstairs. So we, we, did, we didn't spend quite as much time downstairs as we did upstairs. We spent quite a bit of time, but not as much. Um, so we're downstairs. We didn't really catch much. Um, Noah took a lot of pictures. I don't know what he caught. So, you walk downstairs, go to the right, there's this little room where there's this little window there, it's kind of blocked off, and you can kind of see it to the other, well, I don't know how to describe it, it's almost like a little escape route, I don't know how to describe it. So, um, I conducted a little spirit box session in there, and I said, um, I said, I said something along the lines of, where does this lead? You know, where did this go? And, it's, and, uh, and for a while, I didn't really get anything. And I asked again, like, um, where did this room lead? And it said, and this beer box said, out. And I didn't really know what to think about that. Like, And I, and I was looking at where that little um, opening was, that little window. And it was like caved in, um, said out. So I can, and then I conducted another spirit box session over in the, uh, by, there's this little cannon, this 12 pounder Napoleon cannon, um, sitting there. I conducted a spirit box session. I asked, do you do, do you know what this is? You know, and it said Napoleon. It said that like three times. Napoleon, then it said 12 pound. So it, I was getting some intelligent responses in the spirit box. And of course, the basement, or the, um, the winter kitchen is in the basement. You walk down the stairs to the left and walk, walk down that little hallway, and it's to the left again. There's the winter kitchen. It's little, a couple mannequins in there, and there's a fireplace at the end of the room. So I walk back, and that's where things kind of get interesting, and that's where Mary Elizabeth died, I think. Or, no, it's not where she died, it's where she burned. It's where her dress caught on fire, and, um, that's where I asked. I pulled out the spirit box again, and I said, what happened in here? And for a while, I didn't get any, really, any responses, and I asked again, what happened in here? And it said, kill. So this is where things kind of get spicy. Uh, they heat up a little bit. Well, not really. Um, okay. That's where it said kill. Of course, this is after the fact. What happened before this is I, I was there was some artifacts of bones, like uh, bone samples. Uh, they're not real. They're replicas. But and this display case out right outside the kitchen. So I had to debunk this because Noah was leaning against the display case too. So, um, now I was looking at the samples, and, um, I heard this tap come from the winter kitchen. Of course, I'm not gonna just ignore the fact that the tour guide was upstairs. Um, because he was upstairs, but he was sitting down, he, was, he wasn't making any noise whatsoever. I think he had turned off the spirit box at this point in time. And I heard this tap. It sounded like something tapping on the window or... I don't know, but it was coming from the winter kitchen. So and then that's when I decided, you know what, let's go investigate the winter kitchen. So we did. We went into the winter kitchen. And that's where I conducted the spirit box se session. And I got kill coming out of the spirit box after I asked, what happened in here? So that, so that can only... That can only bring me to one conclusion, that, um, that it, it was telling me 
what happened and Mary Elizabeth was kind of killed in that room basically she burned and then those were the real only things that happened in the room and, the, and there's this little library room down there that nothing really big happened in there it's, so that after that we decided to go back upstairs we didn't really catch much in the parlor well except we, we did a little spirit box in the parlor no one that's, that's where Noah Noah again kind of caught play uh, Mary would say play with me I, I'm well I'm not gonna say Mary because I don't know what it was but that's where we kind of heard play and it, it was when Noah spoke through the spirit box that we got play but it, it I don't know how to describe it. It seemed more hostile towards me. Like, uh, we didn't get pushed or anything. We didn't get attacked, anything like that. But when I would speak through the spirit box sometimes, it would kind of get, uh, get out or gone or anything like that. So it was at, yeah, after we caught that little bit in the parlor, that's when we decided to uh, go outside. There's this little family cemetery out of the house a little ways. And, the slave cemetery there, of course, the, the family, well, they were slave owners, um, but anyway, um, uh, we went and conducted a small spirit box session at the cemetery, the, the family cemetery, and I got Mary's name a couple times, he was buried here, and I heard Mary, like, once or twice, didn't really catch much at the slave cemetery, let alone, the, or, or, I didn't really catch anything at the, uh, family cemetery, let alone slave cemetery, but we decided to go to the slave cemetery to try again, and the response that we got was interesting, and it confirmed to me that there is no doubt in my mind that there is something inhuman haunting the property. Noah heard, Noah heard the first one loud and clear, and then I heard the other two demon came through when we were conducting the session at the cemetery, at the slave cemetery. The word demon came through. Noah heard the first one, caught, kind of caught it the first time. I, I kind of heard it. But this, and then this, the second time I heard it loud and clear, I said demon. And then maybe five seconds later, demon. Like, this is where it got interesting. So I had to turn off the spirit box and process what I heard. Because it was, at, it was at that moment that I realized that I was messing with something inhuman. But it didn't harm. It didn't try to harm because I, I felt protected from it I wasn't afraid of it um, but I, I wish uh, in the long run I wish I would have been filming I wish I would have caught all this on camera um, but I didn't Because, because there was quite a bit that happened at the Octagon Hall that um that I should have been filming for, but I wasn't. But but once I heard Demon, like there was no doubt in my mind that something was messing with us the whole time. It seemed to kind of uh, in a way lean towards Noah like trying to get him to play with it I don't know I don't I don't know that's what I can only assume was coming through the spirit box what I was wanting him to do 
but it wanted me out of the way. That is what I felt. And I'm not... I already have a conclusion why, but I'm not going to say why on a YouTube. I'm, I'm not... Um... Just for, for Noah's privacy and for mine. <laughs> but, um... I, I firmly believe that we were dealing with something evil. With everything within me, I believe that's what we were dealing with. But I felt protected. If you're a, a believer in God, if you're a Christian, um... And you'll know exactly why I feel protected. Now, I understand that not all of you probably share the same beliefs that I do. Some of you probably think I'm nuts when I'm telling the story, but um, mainly because I don't have video evidence. And you're you're entitled to those opinions if you want to share them in the comments. You're more than welcome to. Just if, if you do, try to be uh, civil about it. Be kind, and you know, don't just reprimand me or anything like that but I, I would be open to hearing what you have to say about it about my story um, but I, I wanted to get on here and kind of talk about my experience um, I, did, I didn't intend to film or uh, to uh, talk for um, nearly 40 minutes about it But there was a lot to tell, and I didn't know how to tell it. <laughs> but, um... I, fir I firmly believe that if you're a paranormal investigator... I'm not really... I don't consider myself a paranormal investigator. I just wanted to know... See, I well, wanted to go to see if I'd catch something paranormal. And I, did, and I was not disappointed. But if you're a paranormal investigator and you haven't visited Octagon Hall, I highly recommend you do so. But say a prayer um, before you step inside. Because... Um, because I don't know what's there. Only for your safety. Yeah, I just wanted to get on here and kind of tell my story. Whether you choose to believe me or not, that's your business. Um, and I didn't mean to talk so long as I did. But, um, uh, but I, I caught some pretty, I, I, found, um, I had some pretty groundbreaking things happen to me. It's like, for the longest time, I just what ever I'd go to a lot of haunted places. I really wouldn't have anything happen to me. It's like no, no matter what, nothing would happen to me except the one time. Last time I went to Octagon Hall, yeah, yeah I was kind of starting to think maybe kind of getting skeptical. I'm like I wasn't like I, I'm a believer in the paranormal, mainly in demons. Like I think a lot of spirits are probably demons trying to manipulate us but you know I was just kind of getting skeptical that anything was I don't know I don't know just getting skeptical that something was ever gonna make itself known to me but my uh, my opinion on that changed after I visited o Octagon Hall for nearly uh, 40 minutes. I, I did the best I can to uh, tell my story. This is my my first... This is the first video of this kind that I've done like this, where I just gone on and talked about a paranormal experience. Please, please, um, feel free to leave your opinions in the comments whether you agree with me on it or not. But tr I try to be go easy on me about it, because... I did, I did my best to tell my story and what I saw, 
what I went through, I didn't really see anything except through the SLS, but still, uh, what I heard, what I went through, what Noah went through. I have no doubt in my mind that there's something here. But I also have no doubt in my mind that I'm completely protected. Noah is completely protected against whatever is here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, please like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.